another great clip from my two favorite CEOs, Kevin from Coin Metro and Stuart from Cadena. In today's video, we're going to talk about the next Bitcoin. You don't hear many people talk about a Bitcoin killer. I personally don't think that there's ever going to be a Bitcoin killer. I think Bitcoin and Cadena will be brother and sister. I think Bitcoin is always going to be that digital property where unless Cadena is able to get quote unquote deemed or registered as a digital property versus a security, which I don't think Cadena will be a security, but Bitcoin definitely has that huge upper hand. So until Cadena gets quote unquote labeled as a property, versus a security. And until that happens, Bitcoin's always going to be that store of value because it attracts the institutional investors because of regulations, laws, whatever reasons. If you are a property or you're a hedge fund, you can only hold so much quote unquote property. It can only make up a certain percentage of your portfolio. Businesses like Michael Straler, 100% of their portfolio is property and it's Bitcoin. Certain hedge funds can only add a certain percentage. So I think that that's where Bitcoin's always going to have that stronghold, that store of value. We're seeing Bitcoin become quote unquote currency, legal currency. Arizona's passing regulations that make Bitcoin a tax free event. So just like cash, you don't pay taxes on cash, you pay sales tax. Same thing with Bitcoin. Bitcoin should quote unquote be legal tender. That's something I don't think Cadena is going to have anytime soon. But I think that Cadena has a shot at becoming properties. So let's hear from Kevin and Stuart. Ready? Let's dive deep. supposed to help you do and we're here to help you make it scalable safe and have easy ways have a future where you can interoperate with other platforms yeah, yeah. and 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 obviously mo the, every successful protocol in the history of protocols has always been more successful when it's usually either open sourced or there's enough people using the protocol and and building on top of it which incentivize others to build on top of it etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera. so if you're your own little operator sitting in your own little universe yeah that's a heavy load to bear right uh, absolutely. I mean, we do have obviously ETH moving to proof of stake, but, um, the, you know, ETH killers. What about Bitcoin? I know there's a lot of, I you don't hear the term Bitcoin killer too often. I think you may hear the term next Bitcoin, but I don't know if I've ever heard the term, uh, Bitcoin killer, but I have seen lots of activity in Twitter and, and on other platforms where I've actually seen Kadena, uh, being talked about let's say, in, in parallel with Bitcoin rather than with Ethereum. Do you have any, why, why do you think that is? Is it because of the proof of work aspect of it and the fact that Ether may be moving to proof, well, is moving in process of moving to proof of stake? Because I don't know if you've seen the same, but I've seen lots of posts where there's this comparison more yeah. so to Bitcoin than Ethereum. Uh, there's a bunch of reasons for that. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, the, the, I think the main one is, uh, for lack of a better term, spiritual. Okay. Um, when they talk about a spiritual successor, um, mm -hmm. you know, Bioshock after system shock or something like that. Everything in Cadena's design looks to Bitcoin in the sense of, and that's why Stuart Haber came on early as an advisor. Stuart Haber being the most cited author in the Satoshi Bitcoin paper. And if you haven't got the opportunity to watch Stuart and Stuart's fireside live chat, I believe it's on the Cadena YouTube channel. You should definitely check it out. I'll have some clips coming from that as well. Stuart Haber and Scott Stranata are the number one co-cited authors in the Bitcoin white paper, meaning Satoshi took more inspiration when he was designing or creating the Bitcoin white paper from Scott and Stuart than anybody else in the world. So they're the number one authors in the Bitcoin white paper. And then Stuart Habert is also now on the Cadena team. So pretty much the person that helped Satoshi design Bitcoin has been working one on one with the Cadena team, helping them design Cadena. And you don't attract that type of talent. You don't you don't attract those type of players in this industry unless you're the real deal. When it comes to reputations in the blockchain industry, Stuart Habert is the number one most respected author in the crypto space period to date. He started the world's first blockchain. There is nobody in the entire world that most likely understands blockchain more than him. And he's helped craft the Cadena blockchain. The reason, the things that attracted him to our platform were the things that really sought to realize the true promise of Bitcoin, which let's not forget, Bitcoin was originally supposed to be a smart contract platform and uh, it got locked down because of security concerns. You know, interestingly enough, they were that concerned about security that they were like, nope, no smart contracts for you. Bitcoin represents this kind of approach that if it isn't secure, don't do it. And, you know, if there isn't security measures built into the platform, don't do it. So what's the big problem with Bitcoin? Big problem with Bitcoin is it doesn't scale. Well, two yeah. problems. It doesn't have smart contracts and it doesn't scale. Um, but Pact is directly influenced by Bitcoin script. In a past life, I was the head of the blockchain group at JP Morgan. And this is where we uh, wrote the first version of a private layer two consensus, Kuro. 
And we evaluated using EVM, and it was clearly something that was never going to be good enough for corporate customers simply because it was just wildly unsafe. Now, in Stuart's previous life, like he said, he worked at JP Morgan. He built the Blockchain for Excellence before it was even called the Blockchain for Excellence group at JP Morgan. Stuart was heading it up. So he built their first blockchain. He also had the opportunity to interview Vitalik, Gavin Woods, all of the greatest minds got flown out by Jamie Dimon, right? A big dog, right? He attracts that type of talent. Those players came out and Stuart got to interview them. He also got to take inspiration. He got to see where they failed. He got to see all of their shortcomings. And what you just heard him say there, no institutional players are going to use anything EVM. This is something that the entire space isn't making loud and clear like I am. No institutional players are going to use anything that's EVM compatible. Nothing wrote in Solidity. It's just not going to happen, guys, because it's not safe. It's not secure. And as soon as Ethereum makes this switch, it's donezo. Um, so then it was like, well, now now what? And that's where PAC came from. But it also came from the idea that, well, why is Bitcoin, you know, how is why is Bitcoin so strong? And the reason why is a Turing incomplete script. Mm -hmm. It's designed with safety in mind. Uh, it has primitive operations such as check SIG, things that like chunky operations that make it easy for you to do what you want to do. And and frankly, it's such a small language that if you can actually read it, unlike Solidity, uh, unlike EVM, you can actually read a Bitcoin script. I mean, that sounds right. like a preposterous statement, but it's actually true. So then the scalability issue, obviously. And what's interesting is that we are in that lineage because we there were proposals in 2014 for taking Bitcoin to more than one chain. And yep. they were actually shelved for social reasons. It was seen that it was going to make it was actually in, and I think they're incorrect about this. Um, and we've proven this because nobody had ever done this before, that it's no different upgrading our 20 chain network. Uh, you know, so for to explain how we're scalable, if Bitcoin is a single chain, which it is, then that means as soon as you use up however many transactions per second you can do, uh, yeah. things start to back up, and then you use fees to kind of you know to get priority Thank and fees go through the roof. And this is yeah. the same thing with Ethereum. Ethereum as it gets, and actually even with something like BSC, even though BSC is so much faster than Ethereum, it's a single chain. Once you get enough traffic, mm -hmm. it starts to back up, and gas starts to go through the roof. Yeah. So an obvious approach is parallelization. Why don't we introduce more chains? And so they considered this for Bitcoin. Interestingly enough, though, they didn't consider it for uh, for scalability. They considered it for security. Uh, mm -hmm. This block rope proposal in 2014 was in response to the Mount Gox hack. And the idea being that it was going to be that much harder to mount a 51% attack if you had the kind of additional security of witnessing all these transactions on multiple chains. Really, we come from this tradition and also from the tradition of the Satoshi White Paper in the sense that, you know, how Stuart Haber was so heavily cited, how many other authors and how, mu how much technology that already existed was basically purposed to create the thing we call Bitcoin. We're, you know, we're big fans of that approach and this is take things that are known to work, uh, you know, you know, for instance, write a smaller language, it's safer. It just is. Yeah. You have less exploits when you have a small, turning incomplete, it's safer. Proof of work. Bitcoin is the longest running distributed. It's the only thing of its kind that has existed for as long as it has without being shut down. And, you know, famously, Bitcoin could go down for three months, come back up like nothing happened. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, so just resilience and then adding when you add the multiple chain story to it, which, by the way, as we add chains, we get more throughput, but it takes it doesn't take any additional hash power. So that makes right. us yeah. the most uh, sustainable and efficient proof of work in the business. This won't be debatable in less than, I would say, six to 12 months. Marmalade will be turned on. Other influencers will be talking about it. We'll probably start to see these big legacy players that most likely have already been building out applications on Kuru on Kadena using Chainweb, using Pact, Kadena is going to take this industry by storm. How long? We're going into a Great Depression, probably quite possibly one of the worst recessions, Great Depressions, complete economic collapse. But this was literally what Bitcoin was designed for during the 2007, 2008, 2009 economic collapse. That's when Bitcoin inception took place. Bitcoin was designed for this exact environment. So I'm heavily stacking Bitcoin right now. 25% of every paycheck that I make right now, any penny I make in the crypto space is going directly to Bitcoin. The rest is just being set on the sidelines to save. I'm saving in Bitcoin. I'm saving in Kadena. I definitely think that there's a possibility that we do see Kadena come down to a dollar. Very, very possible. But when is the world going to wake up and realize that they can save in Bitcoin and save their money being a store of value 
or are we going into the worst economic collapse? Bitcoin comes down to 10K. We run through this together and then we come out of it on the upside. By the time we come out of it, no matter how this plays out, Cadena will be ready. So hopefully you guys are ready. Hopefully you guys are stacking those sats, stacking those Ks. Appreciate you guys. Shout out to Stuart. Shout out to Kevin at Coin Metro. If you guys want to see how to set up a Coin Metro account or why Coin Metro is the absolute favorite centralized exchange, you can KYC. It operates in the United States. And the exchange that you're most likely going to want to buy all of those new low cap Cadena gems on is going to be Coin Metro. So you might as well get an account set up. That way you don't miss out on any of those low cap gems that are dropping. This bear market is going to be the opportunity of a lifetime. Hopefully you guys are ready. Peace. Thank you.